and in the background there was Susie Sue was there. What, how did that, how, how did they have every, why was everyone there in that situation? Well, you know what, when I walked in the studio and saw them there, I didn't know they was going to be there. I mean, you know, we, we never, we nearly never did that interview thing because we was rehearsing for the Anakins here and we wasn't going to do it. And it only came back, came about last minute because, um, Queen pulled out. Freddie Mercury had a bad toothache, and we just signed to EMI, so they got us to stand in. But we nearly didn't go because we was busy rehearsing, and we only went after about three phone calls because Malcolm said that if you don't go, you won't get your wages this week. So <laughs> <laughs> it was all a bit kind of happenstance. Walked in the studio, and there's. Susie wasn't even in the band there, she's part of this thing that's become known as the Bromley Contingent, and I've nothing against her, but I thought we were doing it, but I think Malcolm wanted it to look more like we were part of a scene, which is kind of fair enough, really, in retrospect. Yeah, and, and that was that. The yeah, funny thing was, everybody moans about Steve swearing, but nobody really moans about Bill Grundy trying to chat yeah. Susie, oh. you know. <laughs> Live on TV, yeah. It's it, it's funny to watch it now, because nobody, you know, when we watch talk shows here now, nobody gets. I mean, the 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 host does exactly what the artist wants. Basically, ask the questions the artist wants. Right? I mean, it's it's different now. There's no contentiousness uh, on talk shows. Nobody's really asking that. I mean, unless you're going on a news, you know, a news show, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, maybe. Well, I think also these days, the, the big, you know, bigger names have got a whole team of of press people. You know, saying you can only ask me, but we didn't have none of that then, yeah. and I still really want want much of that now. Anyway, you know, it's um, I think it's I think it's cheating. Well, it was all yeah, it's all pre planned now. But it, uh, it seems like uh, like Malcolm was. Did he feel like uh, he was too big a personality or like pulling the strings? This is how you guys are going to react with. I'm going to. I'm uh, yeah, no, nothing was planned at all. And I, okay. I could see Malcolm, the other side of the cameras. It was a very small studio. And he went white when Steve swore. Oh, OK. Yeah. Good. <laughs> That's good to know. He, oh, you've done it now, he said, when the thing was pulled, you know, was pulled short, the, the interview. And then when we left, the guys are going out, and I went off a different direction. He said, where are you going? I said, I'm trying to see if there's any more beer in the green room. He said, no, come on, let's go. And then we got in the car that was waiting for us, and as we drove off, the police turned up in a, we call them a black Mariah, you might call it a paddy wagon or something like that, and they went running out into the TV thing. So we waved at them, but they didn't realise it was us. And we drove off into the night. <laughs> It's, it, it was like the Keystone Cops, really. It's funny. <laughs> That's hilarious. They were coming for you? Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Just 